Hey everyone, I am back here just to go over a couple setups from today. It was an awesome day for trading. Unfortunately, I was not at my desk to trade. As you know, I'm in Spain studying abroad, so it is extremely hard for me to be at my desk uh, as I have class during the market open, which is really frustrating, but I'm just gonna keep uh, my head high and uh, you know excited for when I get back to the States and I'm able to trade. Um, so for now, I'll just continue going over the setups that do work for my plan. So the level I was looking at was 305.3, on Microsoft, you know, everyone and their mothers were looking at this uh, level. It was pretty straightforward. And uh, you can even see from, you know, daily resistance on a one hour, a little bit more clear to see. So uh, it does play games a lot. So that's something I, you know, keep in mind. I was also looking at, I think I drew a, uh, yeah, I did draw this out. So it's a little bit clearer here. We have a one hour supply uh, zone that I was looking for us to base out in. And uh, yeah, so uh, I did draw this pennant as well. Uh, this would have been a good entry if I was around to trade for this. I was not around to trade for this. Uh, I wasn't around to trade for any of this actually. Um, but we had a nice five minute RBNR here. That would have been a good spot for an entry, even though we were, uh, you know, decreasing in volume. So theoretically, I probably would have gotten in uh, right at this 12.05 candle as soon as we got momentum bringing in. Um, this, uh, you know, we had VVM. This is pretty clear, huge volume spike. Something was cooking here. Um, an important lesson, and we also you know, broke above a uh, high of day as well as this intraday resistance here at 305 area, which is important. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if we go over to Flexible and just look at uh, what NQ was doing during that time. Uh, let's see, where are we? Here we are at around 12.05, right? Yeah, 12.05. Uh, NQ was really strong, so that confirmed our, you know, thesis, I guess. Uh, so that was a good, you know, good, good confirmation there. And uh, I would have gotten in right as we were, you know, anticipating the 305.3 break. Um, yeah, with a stop probably below uh, 305, a five-minute candle close below 305. Another uh, area that Carmine, I asked Carmine about this just because I wanted to understand um, further. Uh, what he mean? What he meant by it's got to the chart has to prove you wrong. So he said most likely uh, right around this 304.5 area, and I think that's because it would take out this uh, this higher low here, and it would invalidate uh, set up to the long side. So that makes sense. However, I wouldn't have the risk tolerance to hold for a 50 cent drop, which would kind of skew the risk reward. I get it. Um, so that's why my stop would have been a five minute candle close below 305, um, just because I uh, you know like to have my uh, Stop loss, you know, somewhat close since I don't have a big account just yet. Don't really have the highest risk tolerance either. Um, I do like to see my plays work out as soon as possible. And I actually would have uh, stuck this trade out and it would have, uh, you know, would have paid pretty nicely. I would have scaled out at every whole number, 306, 307, and uh, probably about that. So that would have been a good trade. That's the first setup. It was, you know, would have had to wait a couple hours. I don't really like to trade after 1130 Eastern time just because it becomes FOMO hours. But I've seen in the mar in this market that a lot of plays actually do work out afterwards. So if I'm around, I'm definitely going to play and just set my alerts. And uh, I actually had an alert set and I should have played this on my phone, but I really don't trust phone trading. All right. So Microsoft was a beauty. Um, excellent trade. Um, that was one that should have been caught or that was caught at least um, straight from my pre-market plan. The next one I'll go over is AMD. Uh, AMD, I had, ooh, that's not the proper way to go to clear. Here we go. Um, the trigger area that I had was 112.4 uh, to 112.8 uh, with the daily RBNR uh, completion. So just to go over that real quick, uh, we were anticipating this daily RBNR here. And the trigger area was this 112.4. I was looking for an anticipation break. So I said to myself, all right, where can I get in? And that was right at, well, 112.84, a concern. So this is this bottom pink line here. You see it's clear that there was resistance here, support here, um, just an overall good level, <clears throat> excuse me, to get in. Um, and I said, you know, before pre-market, um, actually, la you know, the last night, the night before this, I said, all right, if we gap up above the trigger area, the above the daily RBNR area, I'm going to go uh, get in. Um, uh, around 114.46 with VVM, depending on how extended we are. Um, my price target would have been 114.46 if uh, you know I was able to get in at the first tests or the first trigger area. So let's go over to the entry. Uh, if we have, let's just to compare it with uh, NQ real quick. 
Uh, this would have been a beautiful, beautiful play. Uh, okay, NQ at 9.30. And AMD at 9.35. So pretty much similar stuff. Uh, you know, somewhat relative strength here. Not the greatest example of relative strength. Oh, I hate when TOS does that. It just like does some weird stuff on its own. Anyway, uh, we had a nice lower wick here compared to NQ. It's already showing some strength. And immediately, uh, 112.4 is when the entry would have been. The trigger area, which was beautiful, would have gotten in as soon as we broke uh, the high of this previous candle, or maybe even a little bit further. Clear VVM here. There, NQ goes again. Clear VVM uh, would have uh, daily RBNR as well, and uh, it would have been a, a good, a good trade. Um, and it would have scaled one as soon as I, you know, we hit this 113, 113.5 area. Those were the two price targets I had. And then final price target of 114.6. And uh, yeah, so that was another good trade. Um, excellent, excellent trade. Um, another trade that I want to go over that I had was NVIDIA. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, from the pre-market plan, I had a break above 219.13. Micro key level as well as a macro key level as well. Let's just go over it real quick. You can see that uh, we had resistance here. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so that was another good level. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, price target of 220.63 because that was a supply area. Um, again, same thing. You get the idea from NQ. Uh, this was probably a little bit more, uh, a little bit better on the restore award compared to AMD actually. Um, it would have been another good trade. Um, so, you know, I really had to pick the cream of the crop today. I could pick any of these plans and it would have worked out. Um, yeah, so I probably would have gotten in. Not probably. I would have gotten in right as we were about to break this 219.13 area um, and held until 220.63 for a nice little gain. And then, of course, hold on for a runner um, to invalidate this low here, this higher low. And uh, if I held on for the day, we would have grinded all the way up. So that was beautiful. Um, I did have BA puts listed, but I won't go over that. Um, not really part of what I want to go over. SQ square uh, was another one that worked out really nicely. Uh, the level I had was 251.65. Confirmed that with Carmine as well, and that was a really, really nice play. Um, a lot of people had 250, and the reason why I said I didn't like 250 was because we had these wicks. We had these upper wicks indicating uh, selling pressure here, so... You know, if you play the 250 psychological key level break, well, going with low size with a really tight stop, I just really did not like the 250 area. So that's why I would only take high quality trades, which would have been above 251.65. Um, so the entry that uh, I was looking at, um, again, I was away from my desk. I could have had a beautiful, beautiful day because <laughs> all these worked out nicely. Um, would have been uh, this VVM here at 1230, 1235, would have gotten in right before the break gotten out around uh, 252, uh, 253, scaling out pretty nicely, would have been great, um, and it, we could have even gotten on the retest, um, but I don't really play retest just yet, it's not part of my strategy, anyway, this would have been a nice play as well, um, get, get in before the key level break, scale out uh, whole numbers, and because, uh, you know, we're pretty much open to the upside and had a really, really nice day, um, and then we had, we were looking at crowd. Um, another beautiful, beautiful play. I had 275. And the reason why I had 275, I know people, you know, this is a pretty uh, subjective level. It's a psychological level. Um, you know, people had their own levels. There was, you know, 276.3 was another possible level. I like 275 given the information we had from the past and the psychological number behind it. And, uh, you know, we acted as resistance intraday yesterday as well. So, yeah, so you can see resistance and support here. So I really like this level. I really, really liked it a lot. We also had a confirmation of a daily RBNR, uh, 276, price target of 278.13, which was a supply area, I believe. Um, so let's just take a look at the RBNR. Beautiful, five minute. Uh, you already know the drill. Would have gotten in as soon as we broke this key level. And uh, yeah, we broke this key level with volume. Um, and uh, I would have gotten in right as we, you know, closed candle and boop, got in uh, and uh, would have gone right to my price target within four minutes. <laughs> and then if I had a runner, would have obviously held on for a runner. Um, so overall, a really good day. Oh, and then one more trade that I was looking at, I think, uh, was a wedge. Let me see if I have a, I believe I have a wedge drawn somewhere. 
Yeah, I could have sworn I had it somewhere else. I think it was... I really don't remember. Um, not this wedge. I was looking at this wedge, but my thesis behind this wedge was I was saying, you know, this is kind of just an accumulation for this 4480 level. You can clearly see we have some sellers sitting up here. Uh, the fact that we're holding price up there is extremely bullish in my opinion. This 4468 area, 4470 area was extremely key to hold. Buyers so far right now are doing a nice job. Um, they're preparing this move uh, up to the weekly supply and probably all time high. I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, you know, we have four straight green days, so I wouldn't be surprised if we had a red day coming up soon. Um, so yeah, so far we're doing a nice job of, uh, you know, holding value up here, which is good. We can already see that overnight buyers are defending, but you know, it's still way too early to tell. And you know, we just have to adapt regardless of where the market goes. Um, so can't really predict and rather just, uh, yeah, just trade. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and hope you learned something.